Allah's rahmah and mercy inshaAllah to be upon us and inshaAllah to talk about the, the tafakkur and contemplation, how to keep the connection. We already gave the talk at the beginning about its importance and that how Allah has made all the conditions right, right now to motivate the entire world for an awakening. And everyone with the tools in which Allah has given to them, inshaAllah. Any questions we have for tonight? Uh, someone was asking uh, in regards to your previous talk uh, mm. earlier, is there any particular zikr when conscious of anger? And then someone else said, also when they're tested through family members and strangers related to yeah, again the, the, the power of water and all the tools come together. The one we took a path of silence so if you or we know that we have anger, put lollipops in your pocket because it's just a matter of time before Allah is going to test it. As soon as you feel, mm, I gotta say something and you're about to say something, take your lollipop out, put it into your mouth. If you feel that you're becoming overwhelmed by the energy of anger then again go make a wudu, wash, pray your two cycles of namaz, Salatul Wudu and ask that Allah seal your energy, come out, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنْ إِبَادًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٍ يَا رَبِّي Make the fire to be cool and peaceful and that the power of water and understanding of how to put water on ourselves when, when the anger of shaitan is overwhelming us. And then after your namaz again back with your lollipop in your mouth to control the mouth. The more that you make a conscious effort to control it and not say, oh it came out again, yeah of course it's going to come out. Once it comes out it's already finished, that, that already that test was lost. To keep it from coming is the importance on how to have the lollipop, how to recognize I'm not feeling well, I'm going to go wash, how to avoid certain confrontations when you know it's going to be confrontational and the person just wants to resolve the issue. It's, it's not so much you know trying to resolve the issue, you have to fear more your Lord that, yeah I don't know about your issue or resolving it but I'm worried about my grave and every time I'm going to deal with you it's going to be combative, it doesn't resolve anything and it makes Allah angered. So people think that you have a tendency to run away. No, it's not run away, it's actually Prophet's way. If, if something is incorrect and it's going to be satanic, Prophet walks away. If somebody's characteristics exhibit anger, they can't stay in the presence of shaitan because now shaitan is coming through that person's anger, they're not going to sit and start to talk and debate and discuss a situation because they know that they're not dealing with that person, they're dealing with a, a, a shaitan. So you have to walk away from the shaitan, just walk away and we'll resolve it another time when shaitan gives up and he walks away from you. But people insist that they want to insist, they want to resolve the issue, they want to talk and say, no, no that's not important. This is more about my place and my grave. If I keep failing this test then Allah's anger begin to dress upon the servant. Someone asks, Sayyidi, if you are a beginner in meditation where to start? At the beginning, <laughs> we have the on the the websites. We have everything. You have to catch up uh, from the videos on how to do the tafakkur, how to do the contemplation, and then the easy steps of just isolating oneself, playing some salawats, and just breathing and and being conscious and trying to do your zikr. Visualize that you're in front of the Holy Kaaba and that you're going to do your zikr and that Allah dress you and bless you. And then it keeps going into more and more steps that we have uh, all the different videos and playlist on Muraqabah. So you can go to the playlist on uh, Muraqabah, the website, the Nur Muhammad website also has the section on, on meditation and energy and how to do the connection and the madad, everything, everything is there inshaAllah. And related to meditation, mm. someone asked, can we change the place, prayer mat or tasbih in our daily zikr or meditation? Can we change it? And I guess they've made a location for their… Sure, yeah. Yeah. you can change it to where you think is it's more, more energy there or, or more convenient there. It's just important to have a place. 
a place in which you make like a maqam that you make it something you know sanctified, something holy and many holy beings will come to pray there to, to make, it a, make it a holy location. As long as you set it up they will come. What is the expression? Build it and they will come. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So if we do good things for good beings Allah will inspire these good beings go pray there so that that servant can be protected and helped. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum, how to dis distinguish between inspiration uh, from whispers and whispers continue even after calling for madad? Oh yeah, definitely the whisper never ends. That's the that's station that the whispering is always whispering. So there is no protection against that. We seek refuge in Allah and make the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad to bring that light and that protection. The whispering will be there then they train you on, on, on what to listen for. Means that in all of this training for inspiration, follow the inspirations that have to do with worshipness that I should pray more, I should make my salawats, I should sit down and begin to read my Qur'an, read Dalal al-Khirat, all these things that are in reference to, to worshipness those can be inspirations. Any inspiration in which to deal with a person we would believe it to be not good and nafsani where shaitan is talking to you to talk to a person. The only person I'm supposed to be worried about is myself. So the only inspiration is on how to be hard on myself in my worshipness. Anything that coming of a whispering of this person, tell this one they're doing something wrong, tell this one this like this, tell that's from shaitan. And that, that gets you in trouble and that's the, the, the big downfall of most spiritual people. They think they should advise everybody. But yet they don't follow the advice themselves and then they enter into an ocean of hypocrisy which is a very dangerous ocean for Allah to punish the servant because you're calling people to that which you don't do. So to avoid that then I only call people to goodness and I only worry about myself and being hard upon myself and my practices. Everyone else alhamdulillah they're free to do as they like. Unless you're under the orders of the shaykh that please tell this person this or give this rule for this. Sayyidi, it is said that the power of the shaykh's nazar and connection can force the murid to the floor. Is this a state to help bring out the power of the soul? You hold on, wait. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The nazar, the nazar of awliyaullah is a, is a, it's a gentle breeze and better to talk in reference to Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad that when the gaze of Prophet by His only Allah is going to come into our lives, they say three times a day they'll be looking into our lives. When they come with that nazar it's a jalali not jamali. So when someone said, oh it was like so beautiful, the breeze, the birds were all coming, no, no that was not what they're talking about. The nazar of Prophet coming by command of Prophet the awliyaullah look with their tajalli it becomes jalali. That's usually when the energy hits and you sort of exploding. You're having some sort of a reaction because a jalali and might when the energy of might enters into an area it begin to attack every type of falsehood. So that's usually when we're yelling and screaming and getting angry and arguing that's when they're watching. And that's why the teaching is walk away, wash, go wash yourself, walk away because it's only your grave that you have to worry about, not anyone else. And you learn your training, you stay quiet, you walk away, you go do your washing because my shaykh is watching me now. And the other one wants to yell and scream and do everything and then the shaykh is also watching them and they're being marked down. So that's, that's important in the nazar and to always think that when I'm meditating and, and contemplating that I'm bringing the light of the shaykh to be with me 
and to continuously accompany me. Itaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Have a consciousness of Allah and taqwa is really the opening of all your five senses and accompany the truthful servants. And Allah doesn't care for dunya. So it means that in our world of light we should always be accompanying them. So it's not something we do only once a year when we go to visit them but that was the whole concept of the muraqabah is that to bring their light into my life and to always be with that light. And that from these talks in the last few nights is we said that we found Allah and everything is now reflective reality. When Allah wanted to be found we were searching in Islam and we came to La ilaha illallah, leave everything but Allah and make the dhikr of Allah and in this journey for the love of Allah Allah introduced us to Sayyidina Muhammad and put within our hearts, Muhammadun Rasulullah When Allah loved the servant and guide the servant he puts a love in their heart for where he is. Like hide and go seek, I'm here. Doesn't want too hard where you'd be searching you know from here to the moon. Allah keep inspiring within our hearts, I'm here. And then we begin to love Prophet more and more and more and realize that Allah is a hidden treasure within the soul of Prophet Now that reflects back out, because Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. So then the ulul am who are ahbab and lovers, they also are the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad where Prophet is saying, I'm a treasure and I want to be known. Have you found me yet? So when you come and say, Yeah, oh, I want to see Prophet I want to see Prophet I want to go to Medina, I want to do all these things. But that was like at the first stage when the one keeps saying, I want to be with Allah I want to make zikr of Allah I want to see Allah I want all these things. Allah asked, but did you, did you see me? When you're asking for me, you should have seen me in Sayyidina Muhammad and the clever one realized, oh my, Ya Latif, Ya Rabb, I, I found you. All these expressions of love and beauty and tears and passion, that's all the light of Allah in Sayyidina Muhammad So the same in the reflection of Prophet where Prophet comes to you said that you're yearning so much you're from these people of ahbab like the flame we said, you're, you're the most who's gathering around all these flames. Don't you see me in them? What makes them to be beatific to you is me, Prophet talking to us. Why you enjoy their company? It's me, don't give that person the credit. It's the reflection of Prophet that coming out. That's why the tariqah is all about adab. That when you give, you're giving to the hand of Prophet When you do and you serve, you're serving to the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad who are manifesting that love for you that you should be able to see Prophet through their face, through their actions and through their kindness, through their gestures and through their entire akhlaq on how they deal with you. So much so that if you're good and clever and sincere you may have dreams as if you're eating with Prophet and it becomes like a reminder of when you were eating with your shaykh. And Prophet yes I'm with you, when you're eating I'm there with you, you're eating with me, you're praying with me, you're fasting with me, you're struggling with me. Because what makes that one to be attractive to you is he carries the light of Sayyidina Muhammad He's This is the, the one from his mother, that one died a long time ago. What he represents and what these awliya represent is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Nurul Anwar. There are Muhammadiyun lights that are flowing from them. 
That's what attracts humanity. There are the roses from the garden of Sayyidina Muhammad And then Prophet will ask you, don't you see me? Don't you feel me? Don't you feel that expression of love? And then the clever ones whom are reaching to be awliya would say, yes, I found you. And when I found you, I did everything to treat that one as if it was you. And that's why it's such a big guna for shaykhs to do something bad. And even someone who's a shaykh in training, you're abusing the power and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad When When that love fills you and the light of Prophet emanating from your ears and from your eyes and from your breath and from your tongue, people like you, attracted to you, have a magnetism to you not because of you. You are merely just a mirror but what reflecting through you. So get out of the way and let the reflection dress to people. Not to take it as an abuse for yourself. So it's not the same, the sin of a common man is not the same as the sin of a shaykh where you just forgive the faults. No, no, they were representing a Muhammadan reality. And based on that reality people are attracted and love them. They're held to a much more higher standard and their punishment from Allah is much more severe. So it's a responsibility for those whom taking that path, that that light that coming, that love that coming, not simple la istighfar and sorry, Allah is going to punish severely. It's a responsibility that this Nur Muhammadi when it begin to reflect out to people. Then Prophet asked, don't you see me in them? Don't you feel me in their companionship? Don't you feel that light and that love in, in the expression of their love in their hearts? That's tariqah, means everything that they're teaching about the reality towards Allah it reflects in our understanding of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then Prophet becomes so much more accessible. You don't have to have a ticket to go to Medina. You find one of these Muhammadiyoon and accompany them, be with them, love them and every day should be a Medina for you. And when Prophet calls you to Medina, 10,000 times more powerful because you trained. You trained with that love, you trained with that respect, you trained with all that character. That's what tariqah comes to teach. That's why it's a school of manners and not a school of fiqh. Because manners why? Because Prophet is present there. And how are you going to conduct yourself in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad's light, inshaAllah. And to each wali and each awliya their darajat and those whom love them their darajat, all of them carrying that love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, is it okay to recite different salawats than the ones we recite here? Yeah, but if you go to a doctor and they give you antibiotics and you say, thank you doc- uh, so and so, I, I, I think I want to take Tamiflu and take their own pills or then you know you can do whatever you want. Now whether we recite here as far as the mawlid you can recite any mawlid you want. But whatever Mawlana Shaykh has given in the awrad and in the zikr and in the, the salawat books it's best to follow their prescriptions. That we talked about a few weeks ago that when you start to add too many things then side effects from the medication can begin. Some people would say, I'm, I'm experiencing all these things, I'm seeing all these things, all these things are, are attacking me, all these types of horrific uh, dreams are coming at night and they don't tell you what exactly they're doing. They say, no, no, I'm following what uh, Wazifa the shaykh gave, I'm, I'm reciting that on a daily basis. Later they come back and say, no, you know, as a matter of fact I recite 10,000 such and such salawats. But you may not have the ability to carry that and as a result of making you even more hyper alert, maybe the opening in your heart is opening to see 
but you haven't been spiritually built to defend so then you have a problem. That's why there's a system, very simple, follow it. If the shaykh feels that you're doing more and more and you're consistent and your spiritual training, your character, your akhlaq is of a nature that they feel you can carry more, don't worry it'll come to you. But by virtue of just taking more pills doesn't make you more healthier. You can open up different problems. Um, Sayyidi, what to do when we have flashbacks of our sinful past during meditation? You cry, you make istighfar and that's a… <clears throat> they say that awliya they forgive but they never forget. That when Allah want to open their consciousness that the state of heedlessness stops from them. So regular people they forget, every day they do something wrong they forget it, the next day they repeat it right away. They forgot what they did wrong, they forgot that they made tawbah, they forgot all the things and as a result of that shaitan keeps tripping them every day, oh I wasn't going to do that again, they do it again, they do it again. So they're continuously forgetting. When Allah begin to open higher states of their consciousness, higher states of, of sincerity, He begins to teach them, don't forget, you know, forgive, that ask your forgiveness, don't do that again, make your tawbah, but don't forget how shaitan tricked you into falling into that again. And they have a character in which they forgive everything and they forget nothing. They know everything that has been done but they forgive and their character is a consistent istighfar, istighfar asking for forgiveness. But in our characters it's to wake from a state of heedlessness in which every moment we're forgetting what we promised, what we were not going to do and then shaitan make us to do it again the next day. And that's why then the zikr so far for, for us that's coming in these last days is throughout the day making istighfar, astaghfirullah al wa tubu alayk, astaghfirullah al wa tubu alayk all the way till midday, astaghfirullah al azim because sifat al azim will wash everything away and Allah's azimah nothing is of a big nature, everything will be diminished into nothingness. And when we ask for istighfar Allah's reply inshaAllah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. We're asking for forgiveness and Allah's Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem to wash it. And then after midday, salawats. So the istighfar is the shower, washing ourselves after midday, salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad all the way till night time while you watch TV, uh, play with your children, Allahumma Sayyidina Sayyidina Muhammad, Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad, Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad, to make the tongue and the heart to be sweet with the fragrance and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. And with that inshaAllah then we uh, continue for another night inshaAllah and Allah dress you, bless you, keep everybody safe. Again the app has the du'as, anyone feeling an uncomfortable energy then du'a Ayatul Kursi. Don't say, no I, I read Ayatul Kursi, no, no this is the du'a called du'a of Ayatul Kursi. There's a khadam of the ayat al-sharif in that du'a that Mawlana Shaykh put into there is Malik al-Khandiyas that asking from the presence of Sayyidina Malik al-Khandiyas that from the power Allah gave to you of the reality of Ayatul Kursi that come to be with me through this difficulty. So then you recite that uh, du'a, keep reciting that du'a, keep making the muraqabah, keep making the tafakkur with the, the presence of the shaykhs and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. 
click the link now to subscribe.